Hey guys, Rocket Lake here, once again. What's up everybody, welcome to another episode of the RTB Podcast. What's up guys? Um, so, um, I, I, I obviously, I reviewed the Justice League movie. You definitely check this video, check that video out after this, but while, um, after I watched it, a lot of things kind of broke as I came out of the theater. Because obviously you can't have the phone on while you're watching the movie, like no duh. We turned the phone off, you know, common sense, you're going to see him when we turn off the phone. As I turned the phone on, a lot of stuff was, was, was happening. I was like, holy shit. And, um, and a lot of some, 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 some really sad news, but also there's some sad news with some good news and some more, I'd say generally some great news. But let's get the <laughs> sad news out of the way with, I'm, I'm, I could be, I could be pronouncing her name wrong. If I am, I apologize. I believe her name was... Himori Tatsuru he, he, Himori Tatsuru um, she's the voice act- the Japanese voice actress of Boma on Dragon Ball Z and according to news articles she was found unconscious in her car they took her to the hospital but she later, she later died and I looked more into it before I started recording and people automatically assumed that she died in a car accident what's going on no, it, for, for what it looked like they Based on what I've seen in her body so far, it looked like she was she didn't die in an accident, so it wasn't a car accident. But they're still they're gonna do an autopsy. They're trying to figure out what happened. They're assuming it's natural causes, so they're trying to figure out uh, what's going on. So there's that. Um, cause I did film it earlier, and then and then and then didn't know have that information with me. So now I do. So yeah, she was found unconscious. They thought she had it was in a car accident. She wasn't, and so they're gonna do an autopsy to kind of figure out what's going on and what happened and I'm deeply saddened honestly it just came out of nowhere it's blowing up on Facebook and Twitter everyone's talking about it and I doubt if her family's watched this but if you're watching this guy rocket me on YouTube uh, my condolences Um, I wish you the best of luck and hope you can get through hopefully hopefully get through this tough 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 time together because I, I can't imagine what it's like to lose someone like that. You know, someone you love like that. It's, it, it, I know it must be hard. So, um, the voice actress, I, I, I believe her name is, uh, I think her name is Amiri Hirami Tatsuru. Again, I apologize if I say her name wrong. Uh, I hope she can rest in peace. And I hope we find out as later on as the day goes on what happened. And hopefully maybe prevent it in the future or whatever. Holy baby's preventable, but nonetheless, it was it was sad, it's tragic, and I hope now she can rest in peace. And my condolences to the family. And then, apparently, Chris Ayers, who also, the other story is that Chris Ayers, who is the voice actor of Frieza, who took over for Linda Young, because Linda, Linda Young was the original voice act, was the original voice actress for Frieza, and then I guess she retired or moved on or whatever, so they took over, so Chris Ayers, the voice actor, uh, took over. And no, it might be, there's it some bias, but I like Linda Young a little bit better than Chris Ayers, but if I had to replace, well, if I had to replace Linda with somebody, Chris Ayers would be, like, automatic, like, replacement, absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, so, unfortunately, I found out that he has, like, some kind of lung problems to the point where he needs, like, I think a transplant plus multiple surgeries. At the time I looked it up, it was, like, at $7,000. I'm thinking, oh, my God. I mean, I know I can't give much, but when I come home and get everything together, I'm going to at least donate 10 Me and Cooper was planning to donate, like, $10 each. But turns out uh, we don't have to do that because uh, already thanks to uh, people, you know, just retweeting it, like I found through Twitter, uh, Lanny Fator, and um, also um, Kaiser, I believe Taka, and also Christopher Sabat, just all talking about it, and t- tweeting about it on Facebook and Twitter. And now, because now as I, as I when I recently checked, he's fully funded. He got he got the money he needs for the surgery, which if I'm not mistaken, it was between twenty one to twenty seven thousand dollars. I know it was like well over twenty. I know it was well over twenty thousand dollars, which was a lot of money. Wow, and he really needed it because what what he had was really serious. Because according to Koopa, um, when he looked into it as well, he was out of work for a while. 
So I'm glad he, he got the money he needed to get the, the surgery going for him. So good for you guys on the internet. Sometimes the internet can be a, a sad and terrible place because people say and do mean things to each other. But good to see that when a person's in need, they, they come together and help them out. So I really, really, from the bottom of my heart, appreciate what you guys did, did for Chris Ayers, guys. Thank you so much. And hopefully his surgery goes as a resounding success. And hopefully, maybe in the future, um, he gets back to the voice acting. Hopefully this is not the end for him. Hopefully this is another another stage in his life. And he goes back to in the world of voice acting because he's an incredible guy. And I, I want to see him get into future work because I, I, he's incredibly talented to be cut down like that. So I hope he gets more work. Oh, and I hope he returns. He's healthy enough to, to return to get more work. I hope he's, I'm glad he's funded. Thanks to you guys on the internet. Thank you so much for spreading the word. That's what I did too. I didn't know I didn't know, but I wasn't sure I, was, I had the money. So I make sure I spread the word. We treated it to anyone who hopefully does have money to help. Flood, and you guys did that. You were mad successful. Thank you so much for doing that. And now, hopefully, the surgery will be successful and he gets help that he needs. So thank you guys on the internet for doing that. I appreciate that. <coughs> Excuse me for helping a great guy like that out. And finally, last but not least, the whole Star Wars Battlefront 2 microtransaction fiasco and slash controversy. Strap in, boys and girls, because there's an update to it, which is blowing up on Facebook and Twitter. Um, apparently, I did a video on it called Lack of Content in Microtransactions Kids Twitter Gaming Industry. And so, apparently, you know, it was getting to the point where it was getting paid, filed through Jim Sterling to other people that got, you know, the EA members that had the game early. Found out that you know, because in, in, in a bit of it was it, it was like pay to win, you get star cards and all these things to get do, do double damage or do more damage on your gun or take more hits with a shield, and it gives you an advantage over the players who just don't dip into card, you know, into loot boxes to get these power cards. So they were concerned. They'll tell you to please, you know, take that out or change it or whatever. And uh, and, and, and they thought it was a listen, and people that. You know, when it got, you know, people from, e, you know, then when it came to early access, EA players are like, no, it didn't change it, but it's pay to win. And if you want to lock on, because there's a heroes mode where you're going to play as heroes and villains. If you want to play as Darth Vader, for example, if you want to do it the, the natural way, it'll take you 40 hours of gameplay just to unlock him. And where it would just be easy if you pay $10 in this loot box to automatically get, you're guaranteed to get him. You have to pay 10 more, more dollars than you already paid $60 up front. As it is. So, it's just like mobile shit. It was like mobile shit. And people were furious, to say the least. Anger, the fury and anger. And it's funny, because I mentioned how like people were going to get like this. But I didn't think it would happen this soon. It blew my mind how, like, how fast and how angry they were. Because the Shadows of Mordor was like, yeah, whatever. It's not really fun to the game, so whatever. Call of Duty was like, yeah, whatever, it's Call of Duty. NBA 2K uh, 17. Some people complain, but not as badly as this. Um, yeah, was it 2K 17? No, 18, 18. 2K 18. Some people complain, but it's not as bad as this. Um, Star Wars, they're like, how fucking dare you, sir? You better take this shit off or we'll, I'll, we will, we will uh, respond without paying with our wallets. So, Or not paying in general. Paying our wallets, but pay, not paying in general. You get my point. Point being, people were canceling pre-order... Pre -order, Pre-orders of that game left and right like it was coming out of style, dropping that game like it was a bad habit. Then honestly, I can't blame people. You know what it is? You gotta pay. You know, it takes you forty hours to grind a character up naturally, or you just pay ten dollars more in a loot box system just to get this character automatically. So you pay more money when you pay sixty dollars up front as it is. And you gotta pay more just to get the character. Plus, there's these star cards that give you advantages over other players, so people can drop in. One to two hundred dollars on a character and have the advantage on multiplayer, but not because he's more skilled, because he has better weapons and better armor to protect himself, thus he can do more damage. It's upsetting, and people were upset. It just felt very unbalanced. And this kind of stuff kills the game. I think World of Tanks was a big, like, big free to play game, and it had those kind of similar things, if not mistaken, I could be wrong. It killed the game. It killed the game, and like, no one's not playing it anymore because of those kind of, like, things. Same thing here with, uh, Star Wars, it was like it was going down that route 
and people were not having it. Like, they were having none of it. They were getting really, really upset. And I can't blame them. You know what I'm saying? You paying $60 up front, and, and now they're you're getting all this bullshit. Well, your voices have been heard because of all the, the rightfully so complaining. But there's some death threats thrown, thrown in there, unfortunately, which, guys, please don't do that. Death threats only hurt the cause, not help them. Because you made them let the victim what they're not. They're the one that caused this shit. Don't don't make them the victim. Make you know stick to the facts. Don't be like I'm gonna kill you and your family. That's going way too far. Cut that shit out. That is not cool. But point going back to my point. Because you because your voice is screaming and showing that you you're not gonna you know we're not gonna take it. <laughs> um, they took off microtransactions, so it's now a normal game again, and people are happy as fuck. Because so many people like Maximilian Dude, Angry Joe, Alpha Mega Sin, um, Jim Sterling was not going to buy this game. Big YouTubers were talking about not buying this game. Boogie2988. Just name a few that were boycotting this game. Now because of them taking out microtransactions, now they might be interested in it now. Well, I know Angry Joe had the game already. For, you know, he's doing it for review purposes. And think, and think Jim's had it too, but he wanted to warn people not to buy it. But now that might change due to the fact that... Um, they took out microtransactions in the game. But, yeah, besides the voices and the complaints of people exposing EA, hey, it's this, you, you're doing this, this, and that, you're doing, like, mobile game shit, like, like fucking Simpsons Tapper, like, you gotta pay money to, to, to continue, or you gotta wait a while to continue doing something to get more credits on your game, which is, which is bad having the mobile games doing, like, you can either wait an hour, or you can pay right now to continue. It's like, and it gets worse and worse and worse as you progress. And, like, Star Wars is slowly going on that route, and people are like, no. Yeah, no one having none of that shit. In fact, when they were like trying to calm shit down, they're trying to post this Reddit post, like trying to calm people down. It was the most downvoted Reddit post in history. I think I had over like six thousand like dislikes, and I was thinking it's probably still going. Maybe it's probably calmed down now to the fact that they finally removed the microtransactions, um, aka loot boxes from the game, because no one likes this shit. Nobody does. Nobody does. You know what I'm saying? Nobody fucking does. And glad and thanks to you, you know, you know, you know, you know, voicing your concerns, showing them that hey, we're not cool with this. You know, stand your ground. Now they force change. And 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 then you know, I told Koopa. I didn't make a video of this, but I did say I did tell Koopa before. You know I, how this would ha you know how people were getting upset. I did tell him that if people if they if EA wants people to buy their game, get rid of it entirely, and then and, which they did. But EA, honestly, if you want people to keep coming and not go back to not buying it again, never bring it back. In fact, kill it off, and don't ever bring it back because otherwise, you otherwise people will boycott your game and not buy it again. Because we paid sixty dollars up front as it is, we feel we should have to pay any fucking more. You know what I'm saying? Do it right. Do it right. We we're paying you a lot of money as it is. Don't. Go down this route because it's funny. I, I, I thought it was gonna take a while, but take because because it's Star Wars and there's a big name to it. Just sit down with recent years, how you know with Force Awakens of Rogue One making it Star Wars more relevant again. People were like, nah, -uh, honey. Mm -mm. Either my six dollars is enough, or you're getting shit. It takes you putting that pressure on EA. They took it out, so good on you guys. But again, please don't do death threats because again. That hurts the cause. It doesn't help it. All right, guys. That's uh, but that's my podcast today, guys. I mean, yeah, I know the voice actress died. Chris Sears is sick, but hopefully, thanks, thanks, you got fun, thanks, thanks to you guys funding his surgery. Hopefully, we'll go back into recovery and before you know, it, get back into voice acting again. And thanks to you guys, voicing your, you know your your concerns and your and your frustrations. EA took out microtransactions and making Star Wars the Star Wars game. It was meant to be because I know. From what I'm hearing, it plays and looks phenomenal. But this kind of shit hurts it. But if you want my opinion, ultimately, the straw broke the camel's back besides the negative reaction that people finally, that EA finally budged and did this. Because Game Informer, which is a big reviewing company, gave it a 6.5. Saying it was okay, but mainly, mainly what hurt to get that low score was this microtransaction. Even saying the dark side of the gaming business. And that's not good when a big gaming review critic is like, yeah, no, that's not cool. So it made EA even look even more bad. It's like, you know what? We got to take this out. And EA vows you, keep it out. 
and never bring it back again. Otherwise, this shit will happen all over again. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please make sure to uh, rate, comment, subscribe. As always, Rocket Blade signing out. Hope to see you guys again real soon. Peace out.